Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I wanted to focus on minimal handbags because as you guys know my style is quite minimal and I get lots of questions all the time about where I primarily buy my handbags and any brands that I would recommend, any brands that I just genuinely like. So I've got a bit of a mix of brands in here today. I'm going to share my screen with you guys so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, there is a mix of budgets from lots of different brands ranging from premium all the way down to high street. So I'm actually going to start with the most expensive and then I'm going to work my way down. So, first of all, I'm going to start off with the super, super premium brands, and brand number one is The Row. So, I'm going to share my screen with you guys, because I'm here on The Row's website. The price point for The Row bags, or the price range, is about £800 to £3,450, which I know is an insane amount of money. But as you can see here, they are so super, super minimal, really kind of classic styles, very minimal branding as well, which is something that I look for quite a lot. So there's no big logos on them or anything. And they're also really wearable styles, which I think for like three and a half grand, you'd expect them to be very wearable. But I just think unlike brands like Chanel and Louis Vuitton, they're really classic, they are versatile and they're practical as well. So as you can see, here's some classic totes. Now, another thing to mention about the row is that Obviously you guys know that I do talk about the secondhand market quite a lot. The Row is one of those brands which you can have quite a lot of options for looking secondhand. So definitely get yourselves on Vestiaire. I think for you guys in the US, The Real Real is a big secondhand marketplace over there. Get yourselves on there, sign yourselves up for, sign yourselves? Sign yourselves up for their alert system so that you can get an alert when a specific bag you're looking for comes online. And you can just, I've done a bit of research, you can save around about like 200 to 500 pounds on each style, depending on the model of the bag, because obviously some are more popular than others, and also the condition. So going back to my screen here, I do have a few personal favourites. The slouchy banana bag is one of my favourites. It is definitely a bag that's on my wish list, but as I've mentioned before, I'm looking at buying this one secondhand. It's a really cool style and you can wear it crossbody. It's very slouchy, kind of as the name would suggest. Another favourite of mine is the New Twin, which let me see if I can just find it. It's on here somewhere. It's actually a very similar style. Uh, nope, it's not that one. It's a, Here we go. So this is the Mini New Twin bag. It's a very similar style to the Celine Trio. It just doesn't have as many compartments. It just has two, hence the name Twin. But it is another alternative for that bag if you fancy yourself a trio. I also really like, I'm going to see if I can find it, the medium everyday shoulder bag. As you can see, very expensive. So this is 100% one of those bags, which I would try and find secondhand. But I just like this kind of very fluid shape. And it's not super boxy, but it's quite sort of rounded, which I very much enjoy. And then one final is the Park Tote, which here it says it's sold out, but you can buy the row in lots of different places, not just on the row site. But this is a really classic bag, a tote bag. I think it's one of those bags which we should all have in our wardrobes if we're looking for things which are versatile. Right, moving on to my second sort of premium brand, and it is Celine. More specifically, old Celine. So what I'm going to say with this is secondhand is your best bet. And I think I am a prime example of buying Celine secondhand because I have lots of um, pre-loved Celine bags which I've bought over the years. So as you can see, I'm here on Vestiaire and I've just literally gone to Celine bags. 
I've put them in order of most recent. So there's a trio here, as you can see, lots of other styles. There's some styles that I'm not particularly big on, but styles that I would suggest you look out for, or my personal favorites, are the So Sangle, which obviously you guys know I have in black, like pebbled leather, the Trifold, which I also have in like a tan color, the Trio, which I've already mentioned, and I actually have some really good dupes, affordable dupes for the Trio coming up in this video towards the end as well, the Classic Bag, which I also have, and the Hobo, which is not a bag that I have, However, it is a bag that I am currently on the hunt for. Now again, similar to the Row Celine bags are minimal in branding, very minimal in style as well. They're just super kind of wearable. I find them very practical. Granted, not all of them, but my personal favorites, I find them incredibly practical. And I also think Celine, just as a brand, old Celine, is really timeless. I mean, there are so many different styles that you can find secondhand, so you can really kind of dig around, set up those alerts as well if there is something you are, if there is one of those really specific styles from back in the olden days that you're looking to find. The alert systems on places like Vestiaire are incredibly helpful. It's actually been those alerts which have alerted me to many of the bags which I have in my own collection. Right, moving on to my third brand, and this is my final brand within the sort of premium umbrella, and it is Loewe. Now, you guys know that I have a Loewe puzzle bag, so that obviously is definitely gonna be classed as one of my favorites. Price range for Loewe is around about 750 pounds to 2,800. Give or take, there could obviously be a little bit lower and a little bit higher than that. Now, Loewe, although I've classed this as a minimal brand, I actually think that in some cases, for some of the bags, they are a little bit quirkier, but they still embody that minimal aesthetic. So, I mean, let's take the puzzle, for example. It is still a minimal style. The logos are always usually quite minimal, and also they're normally embossed rather than printed, which I personally think makes them a lot more subtle. I'd also like to say, let's just click on this one for the sake of it, just to show you guys the logo. So there you go, there's a prime example of the logo there which is embossed just on the corner. I also think that Loewe and Loewe's logo in particular is actually one of those which isn't really recognised by the wider population. It's only really, I would say, are people with a real interest in fashion that know about Loewe because it's not one of those sort of overly publicized and really well-known brands like Chanel and Louis Vuitton because everyone knows those logos because they're literally everywhere. I think Loewe is actually one of the more subtle logos and one of the lesser known premium brands. And that's something that I actually quite enjoy. So when it comes to my personal phase for Loewe, the Flamenco is actually one of my faves, even though I don't own the bag. And I'm just trying to scroll down to see if I can find the larger style Flamenco bag because, so this is the mini bag. So you can kind of see the size in comparison to the model's hand there. And then this is the clutch. This is the Nano, which is a cute little crossbody. I wouldn't be such a fan of the Nano if I'm being totally honest with you guys, but they do have, sorry, I should have had this to hand. Here we go, the XL Flamenco bag. I'm gonna bring it up in this nice tan color because it's beautiful. So this for me is a good size bag. I like a big bag. The bigger, the better as far as I'm concerned, but obviously there are few different sizes and options there as well. I think it's a really nice style. I like this sort of less boring little fluted detail around the top. I think Flamenco is a very appropriate name. And as you can see here with this one, you can ruch in the sides with these little straps. It's got that subtle embossed logo and it is very much like a tote style, which I think is again, just a really useful kind of bag to have. And they come in a few different colors, which are very kind of core colors as well. Now, if we go back, another favorite of mine is the cushion, which I think I might actually 
have to search for the cushion. So here we go, here's the cushion. Now the cushion they've actually brought out in a lot of canvas styles over the last few seasons. So there are a few different canvas styles for the spring summer seasons. However, it's the classic leather, which I think is a really good all rounder for all seasons, including spring, summer. And it's just a really classic, again, tote bag, which I think is really wearable. This top section here is actually like a hard frame. So it's quite structured, doesn't lose shape. It'd make a really good work bag and would probably be suitable in the larger size for having a larger laptop, kind of like what I have here, which is the larger size MacBook. Now, once again, this is a bag that I don't have, but is one that I have on my list. So, you guys, if you're looking out there for one second hand, you'll be fighting me for those. Right, now I'm gonna move on to my next kind of price category of brands now, and this is the mid-range brand. And I'm gonna start off with a brand called Wandler. Now, I actually have one bag from Wandler. It's the Ava bag, which is down here somewhere. Yep, and it's the larger style, and it's known for having this little loop kind of closure at the front. You guys might have seen that in some of my videos from last year. Now, Wandler as a brand ranges from about three. £300 to about £850. Obviously I'm on the main site here but they are also stocked on net porte and also Matches and probably some other places but those would be my two sort of main websites that I would go. Now again, as the title of this video would suggest, they are really minimal styles. I think they've got some really unusual shapes as well. So this one here is the Hortensia. And actually, I think this is a really good alternative to the Celine Hobo. It's one that I considered when I was getting a bit stressed because I couldn't find the Celine Hobo. But it's a really good shape. It's a hobo shape essentially it just has a little bit more detail on it but again really beautiful core colors as well lots of neutrals lots of really nice sort of tan and torpy colors too another bag that i'm a fan of at the moment is the obviously the ava bag which is one that i have but I also really like the lin bag which actually i think is further at the top so that's this one here and the Lin bag is one of their newer styles. I'm gonna bring it up in black because I wouldn't be such a fan of grape. But again, it's kind of like a hybrid between a tote because you can unpop these little details which don't make it so round or you can popper them in to make it more of like a hobo style. It's a good size bag. I don't know if we've got a picture of it on the model. You guys would have seen it on the previous page, but it's a decent size bag. Good bag for fitting loads of stuff in, which is obviously what I am a big fan of. Then if we scroll down here, we've got this bag, which is the Penelope. Now, if I bring up this, you guys will see this is the old Celine frame bag. So you can definitely see some similarities between those and the Penelope. So it's a very kind of Celine inspired brand, minimal bags, but not quite carrying the same price tag. That said, obviously, as I've already mentioned, you can get old Celine at a much more reasonable price than buying new. Right, moving on to brand number five, and I have no idea how to pronounce it, so I'm just gonna say how I feel it's pronounced, Neos? Don't know, could be right, could be wrong, but yes, this is my fifth brand. Neos have a price range of around about 350 to 695 pounds. Now I've only found four of these on Vestiaire. So here we go, look, there's not a great deal. And only two of them are available as two have already sold. So you've literally got those two options. However, I will say that it is always worth looking for any bag secondhand. So do sign up for those alerts. So as you can see here, there's a few different styles. I personally think this one here, the Orion, is probably going to be quite popular because I think this is a much more affordable alternative and a very similar style to the Rose Slouchy Banana Bag, but coming in at a third of the price. So I think, keep your eyes peeled for this one, I think this is going to be quite a popular bag 
for this season. Now, there's also other touches as I just referenced to the previous brand Wandler. There are little nods to Celine within this brand as well. So this is the Satin Tote, which I've actually seen quite a lot of on Instagram. And this for me definitely has a nod to the old Celine twisted cabasse, which as you can see from this image here, has this kind of split colorway. So on one side, it's one color, another side, the other color, and then it has the shoulder strap. And again, just slightly more affordable than Celine. Moving on now to my sixth brand. I had to just check that, which number are we on? We're on number six. So brand number six is Joseph. Now I've spoken a lot about Joseph this year in particular. I feel like over the last year, this has definitely become one of those brands that I have become more and more of a fan of. Now, admittedly, this selection on Joseph at the moment isn't very plentiful. And I think that's just because we're in this weird season that I like to call splat, which is in between the season. So it's that transitional period. So there aren't a great deal of options at the moment, but I would definitely recommend keeping an eye on Joseph and checking the site from time to time. They have really good oversized bags. So this tote here is a really good example of that. And my personal favorite is the XL slouch bag, which I have two of. I have one in gray and I also have one in canvas. It's a really cool kind of wide strap, very fluid hobo bag. XL slouch is definitely the best name for it because it is very slouchy and it is a very large bag which I know won't be appropriate for everyone but I absolutely love a big bag. Now in terms of price range for Joseph obviously you've got smaller bags like this so we're looking at around about £195 up to currently 625 which is for this large tote bag here. However there are some options not loads but there are some secondhand so again I've gone on to Vestiaire and I've just done a quick little search here so I would recommend signing up to those alerts because you never know what will come up but there are a few styles here some of them are the more older styles which I'm used to seeing quite a lot in fact there's one a little bit further down here which I see this style here so this bag with the ring was a really popular bag again it was quite Celine inspired a few years ago now and I see that one popping up quite frequently right moving on now to brand number seven and we're still kind of in this mid-range and I've actually got a few of these brands coming up which are I would say new and upcoming brands and they all fall within this kind of mid-range price point but they all carry really kind of designer similarities between them all so I'm going to start off with this one which again I have no idea how to pronounce this brand so I'm going to go with Aesta Ekme <laughs> that could be completely incorrect but let's just go with it so the price range of Easter Ekme is around about 365 euros to 575 euros. Now I haven't bought anything from this brand yet, but they are very, very high on my radar. And I pretty much love the majority of the styles that this brand carries. I don't think there's one that I do not enjoy. Now, in terms of my personal favorites, one of them is this bag here, which is called the sack. And what I like, as you can see here, they've demonstrated, it fits a big old MacBook in there. I'm going to click on this one just so that we can have a look. The colours are beautiful, really nice neutral earthy tones, so incredibly versatile. It's a good size kind of hobo-y tote bag with two strap options there. So you can have it as a longer shoulder bag or a shorter shoulder bag. And obviously lots and lots of room in their middle slip compartment here. It says for a 13 inch laptop, which balances the weight of the bag by having it secure in the middle, which I really like. They've kind of thought about that in the design process. Now, another bag, which wouldn't necessarily be one that I would purchase, but I want you guys to kind of just have a look at it for a moment, because I'm actually gonna bring up an even more affordable alternative for this one later on in the video, and it is the mini sack. So again, 
comes in lots of different options. This one is 365 euros, so this is more the sort of starting price point of the bag. And it's a little dinky kind of cross body bag. There you can see in comparison to the model's body, how big that one is. So just keep that one in mind, because I'm gonna come back to that one a little bit later on in the video. Now, another bag that I like, I'm just trying to find it, because this is one that I'm actually currently considering. Here it is, and it's the Flat Hobo. So it's 485 euros. I'm gonna click on this one just so we can see it a little bit better. And this, for me, is a really good alternative to the Celine Hobo, which if I just bring it up here, I've got some Google images of the Celine Hobo, which is one that I have been looking at. So it's this one here, not this one. This is the old Celine Hobo. It came in so many different colors. It's so minimal. It's kind of like this half moon rounded shape. It's so beautiful, but I'm really struggling to find one. I've had it in my vestiaire alerts for so long now, and sadly, I am really struggling to find it. So this for me is such a good kind of alternative. It's got that real similar shape to it. It has the adjustable shoulder strap as well. Comes in these really nice sort of neutral colors. And I was looking at buying that Celine Hobo in a kind of torpy color. So this for me is my plan B, which I haven't quite taken the plunge in buying yet because I am still after this Celine Hobo. Moving on to brand number eight, and it is LMA Paris. Now, this brand in particular is becoming increasingly more popular. So there are a lot more options coming up now on the secondhand market. So here I've got Vestiaire and I've literally just ordered these in terms of relevance. So you can see here there are a few of the styles which I feel like LMA are most known for. But the more popular a brand becomes, the more you will find them on the secondhand market. So that's just something to bear in mind. So going back to their direct site here, you can see these are the styles which they are most known for. The Raisin, the Bayozi, and the Madeline. It's essentially the same bag, just in different sizes. So the Raisin is the larger size, the Bayozi is the middle size, the Madeline is the mini. If I scroll down here to the large dumpling, it's also very similar. And this actually is one that I have, although not in this lilac color, I actually have this bag in black. And it's a beautiful bag, very, very similar to these styles up the top here. And they also have some in raffia and shearling as well, which I think are a little bit more season dependent. So this one very winter and this one very spring, summer. But the leather styles, I just think are beautiful. It's a really unusual, but still minimalistic style of bag, which are very, very synonymous with this brand. I haven't seen any other brand create this kind of shape of bag yet. And when we're looking at the sort of price ranges of this brand, they're ranging from about 395 euros up to 515 euros. And that's just sort of current price points at the moment. Obviously here, I've just gone on the Raisin, which is the largest of those bags. And these are around about the 480 euro mark. Right, next brand on the list is Little Lifner. Um, again, this is another brand that's kind of really increasing in popularity. I would have said over the last one to two years, this brand has sort of exploded, probably due to the likes of Instagram. The bag that they are most known for is the Tulip Tote. And this comes in a few different sizes. So this is the tall Tulip Tote, which is actually what I have, but I have it in a chestnut color. But the first styles that came out with these, which are the open tulip totes. Now these ones, I personally feel, are a little less practical because as you can see, it's more of a crook of the arm tote or just a hand carry tote. If I can find, there we go, like that. More of a hand carrying tote. Whereas the tall tulip tote, fits nicely over the shoulder and is more of a shoulder bag. So I personally think that one is a little bit more practical. 
Now what's interesting about Little Lifner is that there is no external branding on these bags. So there's not even a teeny tiny little logo printed on the outside of the bag. And actually I don't think that they need that because I think that these bags, in the same way that LMA has the bags like the Raisin and the Biosi, which are very synonymous with their brand, I think when you see a tulip tote, you know it's Little Lifner. You don't need a label on the outside to notify anyone that it's Little Lifner. So I do like that really kind of subtle nod to having very, very, very minimal, or in this case, no branding whatsoever on the outside of the bag. In terms of price point for Little Lifner, the starting price is 148, which is this little pebble mini bag. Not my personal favorite bag out of them all, but for anyone that does like a smaller bag, it is a quite cute little option and it's an unusual shape. And then ranging all the way up to 440, which is for the larger tulip totes. Let's see if we can find, there we go. So there's a large tulip tote there. And they come in lots of different colors different textures, so there's some croc in there as well, and obviously they come in the different sizes too. Right, moving on to my next brand, which is Pollen, Pollen? I think it's Pollen, I have no idea. I could be completely wrong once again. But the price range of Pollen is 130 pounds to about 400 pounds. This is another brand which I'm seeing more and more of on Instagram. But in terms of the styles, so one of my favorites is, I'm gonna scroll down to get a better colorway of it, and it's Lee Cabas, which is this one. In fact, that is a amazing color, it's like a camel. So this is a very large tote bag, but what I like about this tote bag is that it has these little wings on the side. So if we click on, so you can kind of see it there, you can actually pop them in so that it makes the bag just a touch smaller and potentially a little bit easier. There we go, that's a better example to show you guys. Or if you like a really big bag, you can keep the wings out. And again, this one's got very Celine vibes. It's very much like the Celine Cabas in the terms of it's, it's a very large side, really, really clean sort of minimal lines. It just has these darts down the center here which are slightly different from the Celine style. Now another bag that I like is this one here but I'm not a fan of that color actually. I think that's one good thing to note about Pollen is that they actually have a really decent color range as you can see but as I've been scrolling through that there's quite a lot of colors. Oh I could have just clicked on it and just changed the color. Well there we go look at that there's all sorts of colors there for this bag. Now this one is the Numero Neuf and this is like a little slouchy kind of hoboey type bag, but you can crossbody it. I'm gonna see if there's a better, there we go, that's a better angle. So you can add this little shoulder strap, which I think is very similar to the LMA bags. They can be handheld by using the handle at the top here, or you can add the removable shoulder strap, which will enable you to wear it as a shoulder bag or a crossbody, or of course, you can just hand carry it like that. And then going back to the full range, another one that I like, which I wanna show you, which is all the way down here, is this style. And once again, it's another good alternative for the Celine Hobo, and it is the Numero Dix Hobo. A little bit fancier with a little bit more detail than the Celine Hobo, so not quite as minimal. However, it is another good option and it looks sturdy, you know, like the stitching looks good. This is a brand that I haven't personally tried, but it is one that is at the top of my radar at the moment and it's definitely one that I'm keeping my eye on because I do like their very minimal styles. And one more thing to note as well, especially when you're looking at European brands, for those of us in the UK, obviously we have just had Brexit. This is the magical wording that you're looking out for. A lot of brands are covering that 20% VAT charge that you will get from ordering things from outside of the UK. So this here is always good to see that you will pay no additional taxes on bringing in this item to the UK. Right now, we are moving down into the next price bracket, which is High Street. So this is the much more affordable segment of this video. So I'm gonna start off with one of my favorite brands, which is Arquette. 
Now they don't have bags and bags of choice, pardon the pun, but what they do have, I think, is really good. Now I'm gonna go down to a bag which they recently added, which I think is incredible. So this is the rigid leather tote bag. They did have this, and I'm gonna show you, even though it's sold out online, I don't know if it's available in store. Um, yes, it is available in store, good, because sometimes they have online exclusives and that's really sad when it sells out. So this is the brown colour, the tan colour that they brought out recently and they actually featured this on their Instagram, which is probably why it's sold out. But that is a beautiful bag. Now obviously it does also come in the black colour, which as you can see from here on the model, it is quite a large bag, so in, in my opinion that makes it a really practical bag, could be a really good bag for work, but it's also just a good all-rounder. I take large bags like my Celine So Sango, I take those when we go just supermarket shopping or when we just go shopping, go out to Blue Water or something, I always take that with me because I just find that it's a really good size and it's useful to have in case I want to pop any shopping in there as well. Really, really beautiful leather. I've actually picked this one up in store and I've had to play around with it. I had to really restrain myself from buying it because I was so tempted by this bag because it's just absolutely beautiful. So the price range for Arquette in general is around about 80 to 250 pounds, this one sort of being at the top of that price range. But I haven't included any of these cheaper sort of canvas and raffia bags within that. Obviously, that's I've just been focusing on the leather styles because I feel like they're more of a good all-rounder. Now, do you guys remember when I said to remember that bag which I showed you earlier, which I think, was it from Easter Ekme? Yes, I think it was. Well, this is the slightly more affordable version coming in at £79, which is very, very similar. So it's like a little mini bag and it has a very similar shape and it also has the shoulder strap in there as well, which you can see poking out here. So this is a very similar style, which I just wanted to kind of show you guys because it is a more affordable style. If you're looking for a bag of this sort of mini size, it does come in a slightly larger version as well, but I know there's lots of you that like this kind of mini bag style and that is a really good high street option made out of real leather, which is something I personally prefer. Right now, moving on to brand number 12. I've got two more brands after this, so we're almost done, I promise you. Um, so brand number 12 is Kos, and you will recognize some similarities between Arquette and Kos, and that's because they fall under the same brand umbrella. They're all owned by the H&M group, so there will be a lot of similarities in style and price. And I find Kos and Arquette are very similar anyway. So this bag here, this is the leather tote bag, which if I just click on it, very similar to that rigid bag that I just showed you guys from Arquette. Really classic style. It's one of those bags that will go with everything. So it's a really useful bag to have, quite oversized in style. If I remember correctly, I think there's actually a picture of Brittany Bathgate. Yes, here we go. So Brittany He's wearing it so you can kind of see what it looks like on an actual person there. It's quite an oversized style but a really good minimal basic bag, high quality, durable. It's not trend led so it'll be one of those things that will last you for years and years and I think these kind of bags when you're looking at high street are just such incredible value for money. But Kos also does the occasional quirky style as well, like these, and they do actually have a bit of a focus on recycled fabrics at the moment, so like recycled polyester. And there's this one as well, which I actually also have that you guys will recognize. I have it in this cream color, which is a recycled polyester bag as well. And the price point, again, for Kos, very similar to Arquette, ranging from about 45 pounds to 225, but I have included polyester's kind of fabric styles within that price range. Right, moving on now to brand number 13, and it is Marks & Spencer. So, m and I know there's a few m and lovers out there. What I wanna say about Marks & Spencer is that I feel that as a brand in general, and not just for bags, but as a brand in general, I really feel like it gets overlooked. And I think this is because it has a bit of a granny stigma to it. I know it's one of those places that both my nan and my grandma used to take me in as a youngster, and I think it still holds that stigma over it. But 
I can just say, I love Marks and Sparks. I will always check them out for affordable alternatives for you guys. And actually I have some to show you in this bag section here. So when we're looking at price range, I'm saying around about 30 pounds to 90 pounds. So it's definitely in that affordable bracket. And there's a mix of real leather and faux leather in there as well, because I know that there's lots of you out there that don't agree with the use of leather or perhaps you just don't like leather bags. So there is a good range a faux leather in there as well. So in terms of my favourites, I'm going to click on this one first just to show you guys because I think this is an amazing bag and I've actually featured this in a few of my description boxes of previous videos because I think this is a really good alternative bag. So this is the leather three-part construction shoulder bag. That's got quite a nice ring to it, hasn't it? Admittedly, Marks and Sparks are not great at giving their bags catchy names. It's basically does what exactly it says on the tin. And as we can see here, if I scroll down to this image, it is a three section bag. So this is actually very similar to the Celine Trifold in the sense that it has a zippered middle section and then two open compartments either side. So there's lots of different storage options in there. And as you can see, there's a little zippy pocket there as well, which would be probably ideal for a phone if you wanted to keep that super secure. And there's also some really good core cool colors here of this bag. So we've got the tan, which I think is a beautiful cognac color, classic black, which is always a good go to, Grey, which appears to be sold out online. However, you could always try and store for that one. And then navy, which is always a nice addition to have a navy colorway in there as well. So that is just, that's a really good bag. And I mean, sorry, I've just clicked off it, but I'm gonna click back into it. It's got 28 reviews and look, they're almost all five stars. So this is another thing that I like about Marks and Spencer is their review section. It's right there, look, you can see them all. They make a point of putting it right at the top of the page. And these reviews are all from people who have purchased the bag probably lots of different variations of people so you get a really good kind of roundabout idea. Right, now there is another bag which I also really wanted to show you guys and it is this one here. So this is the Leather Double Sip Crossbody Bag. 45 pounds and this is essentially a 45 pound dupe for the Celine Trio Bag it just has two compartments. So for argument's sake, let's call this the duo. So it's real leather and I actually featured this on my stories, I would say about a couple of years ago. They brought it out in I think three or four colours and since then it's been a permanent staple of the Marks and Spencer collection. So as you can see here, this is cream, also comes in a classic black, which I think is a really good colour. One thing to note is just that the models and the, the way that it's kind of been styled for the website really doesn't do it justice because it looks really flat. When you actually put stuff in the bag, it looks a lot more trio-like. And I've actually gone into store and felt this bag in person. And granted, the leather isn't as soft as a trio, but it is very nice. And it's definitely, definitely a bag that I would consider if you're looking for a more affordable version of the trio. So there's a tan color there as well, along with that gray, which I just clicked on, and a navy. And again, look, 113 reviews, almost all of them up to five stars. So it obviously comes highly recommended. Right, moving on to my final brand within the high street section, actually my final brand all in all, and it is very specifically Kin, which is available at John Lewis. Now the reason I've picked this brand is not only affordability, because the prices range from 30 pounds to 70 pounds, now, kind of similar to some of the other brands like Joseph that I've spoken about today, there isn't a great deal of choice at the moment, but I would definitely keep your eyes peeled for future collections because we're just sort of on an in-between stage at the moment between the seasons. But the reason I picked this brand is because of affordability for a start and also because the majority of these bears, and I think 
I think all of them, none of them are leather. So I wanted to feature a brand that only does faux leather and well, as you can see here, sort of nylon. But actually this is a brand which is a very, very minimal brand. Even all of the clothing is very minimal, but we have bags like this, which are very, very similar and carry a lot of the same characteristics as brands like The Row. So there is a bag which is very similar to this from The Row. This is an excellent bag. I actually have this bag upstairs. It's currently on loan because I'm actually using it to feature in some content which I'm working on with John Lewis at the moment. And when this bag arrived, that's what prompted me to sort of feature this brand in general in this video, just because I think that they're really stylish, really practical, especially being faux leather. And yeah, as you can see, I think this is a really good bag. It's got a zipper at the top there, so good for security for a compartment there. And yeah, just holds a lot of designer qualities. There's this one up here as well, the Slouch Hobo, which I also think is really cool. And it's very similar to some of the Arquette and Cost styles, but much more affordable at £59. So John Lewis as well, just as a website, also has that review system on there. So always worth checking out because obviously I haven't purchased these bags, but I just really like the minimal style of them with no branding and obviously no sort of trend orientated styles to them as well. Right, there we go. I've done 14 brands. I hope you're still with me. I hope you're still alive after all of that. But I did want to make a video, especially for anyone that's kind of going through my videos of how to curate your wardrobe and even potentially how to start from scratch if you're inspired by the slightly more minimal wardrobes um, and the minimal style and fashion aesthetic. I feel like it can be a bit of a minefield out there to sift through and to find those brands which are really good for finding minimal styles. So I hope this video has proved helpful in some way. And yes, thank you as always for listening to me waffle on about handbags and clothes and shoes and things. And I will catch you guys next time.